Hey, what's up, everybody? Travis here with BikeBandit.com, bringing you our second installment of our live sessions uh, show here. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking with a couple guys from Continental Tires of the Americas. We have uh, Jeff Hill, who is the Western brand manager, and or sorry, Lewis Hill, who is the Western brand manager, and Jeff Reed, who is the Eastern brand manager there. Um, we had a little bit of audio issues on our first attempt here, so if you guys are watching right now, please post up in the comments. Let us know if you can hear us all right, and we're going to jump over and do a quick intro with these guys. So, uh, Lewis Hill, uh, West Coast brand manager, if you can give us a quick rundown of who you are and what you do. Thanks, Travis. Second time's a charm here. Hey, um, <laughs> so my name is Lewis Hill. I'm the Western brand manager for Conyol Tires. And what I do in my job is I work with the distributors on the western part of the country, work with their reps, and some of the key accounts like Bike Bandit, we get in and do training and make sure those guys are up to speed with all of our technological advancements. And uh, just a little bit about myself, I grew up in Florida, dirt bike guy, started working in a motorcycle shop when I was going to college. A little later on, I started a small distributing company down there and then went to work for a larger distributor and uh, been in distribution for... Uh, close to 30 years, and uh, wow. I've been working with Continental for about nine months. That's awesome. Really glad to hear it, and uh, they're lucky to have you over there. All right. And we'll jump over to Jeff, who is the Eastern brand manager for Continental. Been with the company a little bit longer. If you could give us uh, same basic details on yourself there and uh, who you are, what you do, and what you like to do. Sure. Thanks, Travis, and thanks for having us. So, yeah, my name is Jeff Reed. I handled the eastern half of the U.S., basically Texas and east, and pretty much the same thing Lewis described, work with dealers and distributors, uh, distributor reps, and help and educate dealers, and uh, sometimes we do some consumer events, but uh, making sure people understand and know all the benefits of Continental. I've been uh, riding motorcycles for about 50 years now. <laughs> um, my first bike was a Honda Mini Trail 50. Uh, nice. Yeah, riding right now, still riding 50 years later on a uh, KTM 450 EXC and a uh, Triumph Tiger 800 XC. So still like to ride. Uh, spent a lot of my 30 years in motorsports of one way or another uh, as a race car mechanic doing race prep work and spent a few years as a suspension technician in IndyCar and top level sports car racing. Been to Le Mans a few times. Actually built the shocks that won the 98 Indy 500 with Eddie Cheever. So uh, <laughs> that's cool. Um, but uh, anyway, so yeah, I've been with Continental about nine years, so great company. That's a, that's a long haul over there so far. Nine years is a, a good amount of time for sure. Yeah. Um, is there anything about working at Continental that stands out to either of you that you absolutely love? It's just an awesome company as far as how they take care of employees. So they're real employee conscious and, uh, you know, just really take care of us, look out for us. So uh, just great bunch of folks and a great company. Very yeah, I'll cool. Second that, I'll second that opinion. They really do care about their employees. It's really interesting because I've worked for a couple of larger companies and, you know, Continental is very concerned about the health of their employees through all this COVID virus going on. And they're just a great company to work for. That's really good to hear. I've worked uh, around a few different places throughout my years and uh, it's always a lot more enjoyable when management actually cares about the people working for you. So it's good to hear that Continental is one of those companies that has a good relationship with everybody and that you guys can go back and uh, work work it together and be happy about it. So that, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. So to start off today's show, you guys sent over a few slides. Um, we're going to go through those, give you a little bit of company history here, as well as a couple other little things. So uh, Matt over in production, if you can fire this thing up and uh, we'll get going through them and i'll i'll leave this to uh jeff and lewis here you guys can go through these and let us know what you think about the slides and give us the details with them so the first slide is just an introduction slide that we've already went through if we go to the second slide we'll talk a little bit about continental we'll wait for matt to change it so what you see there is a picture of an early continental factory it's probably around the turn of the century um, <laughs> you know you see those guys with a lot of hands on building tires well you know it hasn't changed a whole lot the equipment's a little bit more modern and the way that they do it is a little bit automated but there's still a ton of hands on building the tires that goes on and Continental was was founded in 1871 that makes them the, the oldest tire manufacturer in the world currently one of our competitors wow. was founded in 1872 so we beat them by a year and <laughs> they didn't make tires right off the bat but um, as you'll see in, in the next slide we've, um, we've had a lot of success in racing and 
You can see there's some really old pictures. There's guys doing racing. We had some wind streaks that were really good. We've come up with some technology that was the first of its kind. So if we'll go to the, to the next slide, Matt. We'll hey, talk a little just bit. real quick, that slide of the Bonneville Streamliner, we were the first uh, tire to go over 200 miles an hour at Bonneville in 1956. And that's the photo in the bottom right of that slide? Yes. Yeah. 200 miles an hour in, what did you say, 1956? Yeah. That is, that's wild right there. I mean, that's some strains on the tire with the centrifugal force trying to pull it apart. So yeah. it's cool yeah. to have the technology even back that far. Yep. So as you can see, there's there's some of our different logos that we've used, but every one of them has the same thing, a horse. And so the, one of the first products the company made was horse hoof buffers, like a rubber horseshoe almost, to protect the horse's feet and to keep them from sliding in icy conditions. And so uh, also huh. coincides with Hanover, which is where the city they, where they were founded at. Hanover's coat of arms has a horse in it. So we've adopted the horse, and it's been with Continental the whole way through very cool. What uh, yep. state or country or whatever is Hanover actually in? Where's Continental based so, out of? So Continental is a German company. We're very proud of our German engineering and German heritage. They are, mm -hmm. The technology that they produce is second to none in this factories. If you go to the next slide, there's a few different bullet points on some things that we've done as a tire company. So you can see in 1901, we first were the first tire company with Mercedes-Benz. So they put those tires on and did a race record. It seems kind of crazy now, but it was. Um, like yeah. Hey, Lewis, can you uh, talk a little closer to the microphone yeah, there? It's a little sorry. faint still. Sorry about that. That's all right. I got to just make a quick adjustment here. So um, you can see they, they did um, 414 kilometers in six hours, which, which is not very fast by today's standards. But back then in 1901, that was tremendously fast. Um, nice. We also, Continental introduced the first car tire that actually had a pattern tread to it so that it had better traction. They, um, they invented the detachable rim for a sedan. So previous to that, the whole rim and the hub and everything had to be taken off to change the tire. And then they produced a, a rim that would just come off and it was a lot easier for them to change tires. And you can see, I'm not going to read every one of these, but, you know, we... We're on the first airplane to cross the English Channel. Our material coated wings and the fuselage, it, it's just amazing some of the different things. Um, we actually got the first patent in 1943 for, for a tubeless car tire. Wow. So, you know, some, some really interesting first. 1960, we put an R designation on radials. That became the worldwide standard. So everybody's radial has an R on it. So you can see that it's a radial nowadays. Hmm. 1968, we actually introduced the first electronically controlled driverless car. So, you know, everybody thinks about the Tesla the autonomous driving. Well, we were working on it back as far as 1968. Wow. That's a little little while ago right there. It's cool that you guys were working yeah. on that technology that far back. Yep. And, you know, through acquisitions, we've, we've acquired Uniroyal in Europe. We acquired General Tire in North America. So we've become a pretty big manufacturing presence in the tire business. Nice. The That's great. Slide, there's a little bit about our company there. So as you can see, this was a this was from 2017, but it's it's pretty indicative of what Continental does as far as business. Forty-four billion dollars in euros, which is about forty-seven billion U.S. dollars by today's trade. It's um, a couple bucks. Still have, yeah, that's a lot of money. We still <laughs> have over two hundred thousand employees. We still have over 554 offices in 61 countries. So we're a huge company around the world. And if we go to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about some of the things that we make. So as you can see <clears throat> from this slide, we have five different divisions. And tires is, is just one of the five divisions, although it's about 26% of the overall business. Um, we Everybody that's on this YouTube tonight is driving a car or a motorcycle, there's a part in there that's made by one of Continental's companies. We make a ton of OEM parts. We make engine parts. We have sensors. We make transmissions. I was standing in an airport with my Continental backpack, and a guy asked me, hey, do you work for Continental? And I said, I sure do. And he said, I love your conveyor belts. Well, I had no idea we made conveyor <laughs> belts. 
<laughs> you know, the guy the guy loved our conveyor belt, so it just well, made it's, me proud to work. Yeah, it's neat that uh, not only is it cool that you guys make a good conveyor belt, but it, it's neat there's somebody out there that appreciates conveyor belts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite thing. One of my favorite things to mention is, you know, particularly since we're in front of a motorcycle crowd, is we do engine management for the fuel injected uh, two stroke KTMs and Husqvarna's. Uh, oh, yeah. We, yeah, we do some engine management for uh, Ducatis. I, I couldn't tell you exactly which model, but I know Ducati is one of our engine management customers. And then uh, another good one, BMW. Is like a let's say an S1000RR. About 30% of the parts are Continental, so oh, wow. you know it could be the analog brake system, sensors, fuel injection management, things like that. So, so we're into a little bit of everything. Nice. They actually you. won they won an award at the Consumer Electronics Show for a speakerless surround sound, which just totally you know blows my mind. How did that work? But you know, they won an award because they're constantly advancing the technologies that they're working on in every division and mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting because you know they're they're really strict on the security like with our computers and stuff because we're all on the same servers and they don't want anybody to hack our stuff so it's kind of cool makes sense so mm -hmm. let's if we go on to another slide there this kind of a crazy slide that shows a little bit about tire manufacturing so <laughs> i like that i mean that's kind of like that i mean they they mix the compounds, they extrude the different compounds, the guys are laying out the different belts, they're putting the, the beads on the tires. It's a lot of hands-on uh, work to build a tire. They run it through a mold, they heat it, you know, they pop it out, they quality control it, which is kind of interesting because I've had some people, in addition to the other jobs that Jeff and I talked about, we handle... We handle a fair amount of customer service calls where, you know, if a guy has a warranty issue, they'll call and, they'll, and they'll, we'll talk to him. And I had a guy say, well, you know, this tire was probably a Friday tire. I can promise you there is no <laughs> difference in the tire that's made Monday morning to the tire that's made on Friday. And actually, they don't stop on Friday. We run our factories. Most of them are running 24-7 building product because we're that far behind on keeping up with demand. But it's very controlled. Every process is measured. Every tire is measured from start to finish. And, you know, we produce a quality product. So, you'll, you know, you'll see that uh, a little later. We'll talk about some of that stuff. All right. All right. So, audio seems to be doing pretty good across the board right now. There's a couple guys on YouTube saying it's kind of glitching in and out. I know YouTube was down a little bit today. Um, so, if you guys are watching on YouTube right now, Right now the stream on facebook is crystal clear great audio so just want to throw that out there if you guys are having trouble hearing us on youtube uh you guys can hop over to facebook catch the show over there and everything is working perfectly fine on their site right now um sorry to interrupt you there we'll no, jump back okay. over to the next slide but how yeah, actually a uh, question for you how many sure. uh different factories do you guys have approximately that are producing tires for you oh, okay. yeah. if you don't mind it might be proprietary information i don't know yeah it's not but I don't know if we actually even know. I mean, motorcycles are made in a few different ones, but they have car tire factories all around the world, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah car tires and uh, commercial vehicle tires. Um, you know, I know we have several plants here in the U.S. and, of course, throughout Europe and uh, Asia Pacific. So we're, we're pretty much everywhere. So. Yeah, that, that's a good point Jeff just brought up. We, we make not only passenger car tires, we make earth mover tires, tractor tires, anything that's got a pneumatic tire on it, we're probably making it. In addition to that, a lot of the guys that are on this, watching this this uh, show, they have bicycles. Continental's the number one bicycle tire manufacturer. We yep. sell more bicycle tires than anybody else. And if you've ever ridden on a Continental bicycle tire, you'll know why, because it is a phenomenal product. Yeah, I actually have some on my road bike, so. Oh, cool. Yeah, we were Tour de France winner, I think, last year or 2018, I think it was three of the top five and three of the top five again in 19, so including the winner. So when it comes to the street bicycle, we're the kings. Yeah. It's cool to have such a just broad thing, broad amount of things that you guys do. I mean, in the tires, you're hitting every segment, but then learning that you guys do car parts, engine parts, engine management, and my TPI KTM downstairs. and Yeah on and on and on there's so many different little things that you guys are into and it's it's really neat to hear the company is growing in so many different directions rather than just rubber which is what i assumed 
Yeah. Yeah. They told me when I first started a few years ago that if you drive a modern car or truck of any kind, chances are better than not. There's a continental part. Very cool. Yeah. So what do we have up on this slide right here? It looks like core we technologies. Have, we have, yep, we have some different core technologies. Some of them are, are things we're really proud of, like our multi-grip uh, uh, tire. And, and it, these technologies are not on every single tire we make because some of them may be a bias tire, some of them may be a radial tire. Um, some of them, because of the construction, we can't use them on that particular tire. But like multi-grip is a process through which we use a single grip tread, tread um compound and through our process of curing and heating the tire we actually make the center of the tire harder so it gets better mileage and the sides are soft so you get hmm. great you know great handling when you're in a corner but when you're going down the road straight you get better mileage now there's some other companies that do this and they do it through using two different compounds in their tread but when you do that when the tread is when the tread is in the mold it has to heat the tread up and push it around the tire. So you get those two compounds kind of going together like, you know, like my fingers are here. So you don't get a smooth transition from the hard to the soft, and it may not be even. But the way we do it in the, in the mold is a very, very even transition from the hard to the soft. It's huh. a really cool process. I've never really so thought about that. But, I mean, if you are dipping into a corner, you can feel the bike go from one compound to the other. Um, versus just baking it and learning how to heat treat the tire. That's pretty interesting that you can get it to have different durometers on the rubber, essentially, just by the exactly. way it's uh, processed. Exactly. We're really proud of this engineering team we have in Germany. They do some phenomenal stuff. We have like our rain grip. It's an optimized compound for, for best wet grip. And, and they do that through an activated silica compound that's mixed in with the, the carbon black. And it's it's phenomenal. And not only is it good on on the motorcycle tire but i have a i have a company vehicle i drive and one of the very things you have to do when you get the company vehicle is put on continental tires you know you don't want to drive over to a you know customer with somebody else's tire on your on your car so i was driving around for a couple weeks while my tires were coming and it was raining and i was noticing that those tires were slipping and sliding every stoplight now i don't get on the gas really hard especially in the rain and the tires just were horrible. So my Continentals came in, had them put on, didn't think much of it. A few weeks later, it's raining again. I'm driving around. I thought, hey, wait a minute. These tires aren't slipping and sliding like those other ones were. It was just a phenomenal difference in the grip of the tire. So the, now, the this is in was, what, like a uh, Lamborghini, a Ferrari, an M3? What's what's <laughs> Continental yeah. get you guys for a company car? Yeah, I think each one of us gets a Lamborghini. Isn't that okay. what you have, Jeff? No, I'm driving a Bentley. Bentley. Yeah, okay. Well, he's got That's the Bentley. Cool. Yeah, he's been with the company longer. No, we, <laughs> you know, the company is. I mean, we would love to, to do that, or we, you know, but um, the company's frugal with the money we spend. I mean, we're a publicly traded company, and we look for vehicles that meet the needs that we, you know, where we can take tires around with us, and we can take things to different uh, dealerships, and we get good gas mileage, and it's comfortable to drive and safe to drive. I was just joking with the tire spin. Oh, I figured had at least a couple thousand horsepower there. Um, but you know, I was kidding. I don't want anybody to think that we're driving Mercedes around. We're not. We drive. Yeah. We drive economical cars that are functional for what we need to do, and they're um, cost effective for the company. Yeah, that's so, good. Yeah. So I got a couple more slides to get through here, or not get through, but to show you. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see them. And then I got some questions of my own about some adventure bike tires. So what are we looking at here? Test stuff. So. What? Yeah, one of the things we do is we do a lot of extensive testing. And so you can see there's four tracks that we have there. We own these tracks. Um, the one that I'm most familiar with, and Jeff can talk in a minute about some of his, but Uvalde, Texas. I, I live in Fort Worth, Texas. Uvalde is about seven hours south of here um, on the, near the border of Mexico. And it is a huge facility down there. And there's always something going on. They have cars on there. They have earth movers. I mean, like huge front end loaders they're testing all kinds of tires and not huh. just continental tires because we own these facilities a lot of our competitors and a lot of car manufacturers rent time on our on our tracks so they can test their tires so it's just it's a, it's amazing jeff you've been to a couple of these yeah you? i've actually been to the connie drum there you see that little picture on the left there the connie drum the banking is actually 86 degrees so wow. so I, I was more riding like the lower position there. I wasn't up on the high banking, but uh, I was there <laughs> for a 
press event. And some of the journalists like Ari Henning and uh, some of those guys were up at the top, you know, going flat out. But uh, they say that you can only do 10 laps maximum at the top banking because the blood rushes out of your head. So, so it's pretty, pretty intense. But uh, of course the drone part is only part of it. We've got uh, wet and dry ta uh, tracks. Um, interesting thing though, this is a, this gives you an idea of the, the extent continental goes to in engineering. There's a wet test track, a road course in the county drone in Germany. And then there's an absolutely identical wet test track in Uvalde, Texas. So identical. <laughs> that they actually ship the asphalt materials from Germany. So the track in Uvalde is identical to the one in uh, Gandhi Drome. And uh, I haven't driven or ridden at the track or the test facility in Uvalde, but you can see the big oval. That's an eight mile oval. And wow. it's like a, uh, I'd say three ring circus, but much more rings than just three. But there's like science projects going on everywhere. There's a uh, a quiet test track. There's wet skid pads, and you know you'll see some vehicle going around on the skid pad with a camera hanging off the side of it, and it's just amazing all the stuff that goes on there. So uh, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, I think the one in Uvalde is about seven thousand acres or something like that. It's a huge <laughs> facility. Off-road tracks. Uh, you know, of course, we are general, so which is really big in off-road vehicle tires so there's off-road tracks besides all the on-road stuff so pretty amazing stuff and like lewis said you know gosh audi will be there testing and volkswagen uh, you know uh one when i was there at the connie drum some of the european truck manufacturers were doing wet track testing so there's these semi trucks going around the wet track it's pretty amazing but uh that's they, neat yeah it's fun yeah i was gonna ask on how big that oval was so eight miles that is just insane um, yeah I remember watching an older episode of uh, Top Gear where uh, I believe it was Richard Hammond or mm -hmm. one of those guys. Ha they had some supercar trying to max it out on speed. And they were on one of those giant ovals. And I'm just like going, where the heck is this place? And oh, I, I remember I that episode, yeah. Yeah. Hitting 200-something miles an hour in a production car. Something else Absolutely they do crazy. The, the bikes that they test in Europe, they actually fly those same bikes over to Uvalde and test the same bikes in Uvalde. Really? Just so that their test results are identical. They, they can see exactly what they're doing. Hmm. It's so interesting. An, an interesting fact, another fact that I forgot to mention is a third of every car in Europe has Continental tires on it. Wow, that's something to be said right there. Yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of cars. All right, and Matt, if you could pull up the next slide, please. So this is our new Sport Attack 4. This is our new uh, premium hypersport tire for the guy that wants to do, um, you know, a hypersport tire on his street bike, but maybe does an occasional track day. Mm -hmm. We would call it like, let's say a 90% street, 10% track tire. So it's got a, a the latest version of our, our high-tech compounds. We call it Black Chili. So it's a real uh, good combination of silica, but also with the racing compound carbon black. So it's a tire that holds up really well in heat, but still has a quick warm up and excellent wet weather traction. Uh, nice. We're always working on the profile to, you, you gotta, profile has a lot to do with how a tire feels. You don't want something that's too angular that makes the bike feel like it falls over into a corner. So it's a good profile design for very responsive, but also puts a big fat footprint on the ground at high lean angles. Handling and agility is something we always build in to. We always, we're about enjoying the ride. So we have a, always build a tire that's pleasant to ride. So it's very mm -hmm. agile and precise, super quick warm up time. That's probably something we're best known for of that and wet grip. So we've got, uh, in fact, this is fun. We win a lot of the magazine tests. You know, in Europe, the magazines do a lot of tire tests and, uh, you know, tire shootouts. And we're always, if we don't win, we're at the top. But our latest stuff always wins. So super good wet track, uh, wet weather um, handling. And, uh, of course, like I mentioned, it's suitable for hobby racetrack use uh, without tire warmer. So, And on the right, you can see all the core technologies. Of course, these are handmade in, Germ in Germany. has a zero-degree steel belt. Uh, the traction skin, pre-scuffed surface, 
uh, the rain grip compound, the multi-grip technology, uh, which is that harder in the middle, softer to the edge done in the curing process. And then mm -hmm. that last little logo is a little hard to see, but it says grip limit feedback. So what that means is we build a tire that both compound and uh, carcass construction work to make a tire that's very predictable. So a lot of times you could have a hypersport type tire with a real stiff carcass and it's, um, you know, it turns really precise, but it feels kind of numb. So when you're at the limit, you can't really tell where the limit is. And then the next thing you know, it's a low side. Uh, these tires are very predictable. So um, we call it grip limit feedback. So that's built in on purpose to give the rider a real feeling of confidence so you can tell when he's close to the limit. So, that's great. I mean, a tire in this segment right here, which is going to be something you can do some light commuting on, but it's going to be good for going up, tearing up some canyons on the weekend. Um, and it's going to fit that intermediate to fast level rider for a track day also without getting too hot. Um, yeah. So, I mean, a tire like this seems like a really, really popular segment for most of the riders out there. And mm -hmm. the fact you said it's uh, pre-scuffed in also. Yeah, that traction skin, that rough surface that Lewis mentioned earlier, the purpose of that is, you know, normally a tire has a shiny surface to wear off to get maximum mm -hmm. grip with a traction skin tire, um, why there is no shiny surface to wear off. So it's essentially pre-scuffed. So they really come in very quick. Is that something that's molded into the tire or do you guys... Yeah. sand it on something before you ship no, so it, it is molded in whole process yeah very cool actually we skipped over that slide jeff they, they kind of went by it so oh, okay that's a good explanation it, yeah. it's in the mold and, and it makes us not have to use the releasing compounds that some of the other tires have to use yeah okay so it's almost like a mold release that's causing certain competitors tires to be a little slick as you start to run them in yeah well it's hard to get a tire out of the mold if it's not um well, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not going to get into it. But anyway, the the traction skin is in the in the mold, and it comes out with a tire that's essentially pre-scuffed and ready to ride. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I always love learning little stuff like this. Like, I'm not a huge sport bike guy, but the technology that goes into this stuff, because I know some of it transfers over to off road also. It's oh, so sure. interesting. I don't I don't care what it is. It's just I love that companies put the time and energy into doing this stuff and it's so neat to see mm -hmm. what comes about it and how you can develop something to make it even better and better so yeah, yeah definitely cool. neat stuff you know i forgot to mention but one of the companies that's under the continental umbrella is hoosier tire really yeah huh so if you go to the supercross races you've probably seen them in the pits because they're starting to make some some knobbies for dirt bikes some very very light tires from what i understand also yes they are well, uh, let's go ahead and pull the next slide up there, Matt. So this is our new sport touring tire called the Connie Road. This is the tire that's, uh, we have a, a premium sport touring tire called the Road Attack 3, which is another magazine shootout winner, just an awesome tire. But we built uh, this new tire called the Connie Road as a second level tire for the rider that's looking for really high tech tire with a, a little bit better price point. So it is engineered in Germany, the same guys that uh, built the Road Attack 3 uh, designed this one. So it's developed to be a very comfortable touring tire uh, that's an very agile handling. Mm -hmm. Test winner jeans, you know, I mentioned that we win a lot of the magazine tests. Um, and this one, I forgot to mention it on the Sport Attack 4, but you can see this tread design has uh, no drainage grooves in the center. We call that a backbone type tread design. So okay. that's built on purpose for mileage so and the idea is that better traction equals less slippage which equals better wear so this one is uh, the latest of our backbone tread design uh which lends to the mileage uh super good wet weather performance because it's another version of our high silica um uh, rubber compound and silica is like best one of the engineers explained it uh one of the press events i was at and it was really made sense it's like a, a molecular level um uh, spacer so the rubber molecules can get a hold of that you know even the smoothest road in the world has microscopic imperfections so that silica uh helps the rubber molecules get a, a deep hold of the uh, road surface so very cool I yeah. heard different types of compounds work better in wet, dry, or whatever, but yeah. the silica seems to be what 
is grabbing on, especially when there's water involved. Yeah. Well, the trick is that, you know, you can build a real high silica content tire, but which is great when it's cold and great when it's wet, but uh, doesn't hold up so well under heat. But uh, I think we've done a really good job of building a tire that has the cold and wet weather traction, but uh, still holds up in hot conditions. So. All right. Very cool. Yeah. So then what else? Uh, well, yeah, this is fun too. So I talked about the tread design in the middle, but see the, the drainage grooves go all the way to the edge, but even mm -hmm. at, the, at that outer edge. So when you're at full lean angle, you can see there's really large blocks of rubber. So you're even at high lean angles, you're putting a lot of rubber on the road. So, uh, so better traction, of course. And one thing too, you can see, it's probably hard to see on your screen there, but the last little logo is uh, performance over time. You know, we build tires to work as good the last mile as they do the first mile. And uh, that's real important. And I never really occurred to me about this, but listening to uh, one of the test riders, our head test rider, talk about it. He was talking about some of our competitors that they uh, uh, benchmark. And there might be a competitor tire that's great in the wet, but 500 miles later, not so good. So we really work hard to build tires that work as good first mile to last. So. Yeah, that's good. I mean, there's a lot of products out there in automotive, motorcycles, whatever. You put a couple of heat cycles on them, and I don't know if it's oils coming out of the tire or what it is, but they just don't have that grip after a few heat cycles. So if you can produce something that's going to work good on day one till day whatever when you're getting ready to ship it off because it's too worn out. But yeah. uh, having a trust in the tire throughout its entire life is definitely a big thing. Oh, that's – we're all about it. So, yep. yep. Cool. Let's see what the next slide looks like there. This one's got me excited right here. Um, I've had my eye on a set of these tires for a little bit here, the TKC70 Rocks. Uh, this is a fairly new tire for you guys, right? It is. It's brand new, and we've sh been shipping those for a little bit now. Of course, with the virus situation, why things are not moving as fast as all of us would like. But what this is, is so we have the TKC70, which is kind of a 70, 30, you know, 70 street, 30% dirt. Uh, it's based off the Trail Attack 2, which is a highly successful adventure tire, more on the street side of things, uh, but with a more aggressive tread design. So again, uh, engineered and hand-built in Germany, uh, zero-degree steel belt technology, has the multi-grip, which is the softer on the edge, harder in the middle, done in the curing process, in our rain grip compound. So the idea was now the Rocks is a rear tire only, so it's meant to work with the standard TKC70 front but give you a more aggressive rear. So you call this more of a 60, 40, 60 street, 40 dirt. And whereas the, uh, the TKC 70 has a solid band of rubber down the middle, kind of like what we talked about the backbone dread designs. This one is much more open, which gives, gives you the self cleaning properties of a more off-road tire for dirt and gravel. Mm -hmm. uh, Great grip and handling on the street, very quiet too. And this is interesting because it's not just a, TKC 70 with with some grooves got in it. It's a no, it's an all new tread design uh, because we put a lot of effort into making a tire that's pleasant to ride, which means you know a lot of road noise and smooth. So it's a very quiet, very smooth tire, but still has good off road performance. And of course, these are, are all radials made handmade in Germany. So yeah, a lot of interest in this. I, I can't wait to get a set of them on my uh, Tiger. Now, you were saying that the TKC70 Rocks is just a rear tire. So the front tire pictured next to that, is that the standard TKC70? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And did the original TKC70 rear uh, resemble the front tire as far as tread pattern? No, it's a bit different. It, it would be similar to the 70 Rocks, but imagine a um, solid band on the middle without okay. the, the uh, individual blocks. Gotcha. But you can see how the blocks are kind of offset. That's something that's built in so the tire stays quiet. So it rolls smooth and uh, very quiet, too. Nice. There's some other tires on the market that are trying to hit this this segment, so to speak, but uh, are, are either not radials and not speed rated like these things are, uh, but also uh, very noisy. And so this is a tire that's uh, very quiet, very smooth performance, and it's speed rated. Uh, for the big uh, big adventure bike, so nice. pretty awesome tire. Yeah, I think this is going to be really good. Yeah, like I mentioned, I'm starting to get into the adventure bike 
market myself. I picked up a KTM 790. And yep. uh, for me, I've always been a dirt bike guy, so I haven't really cared about a street tire. But mm -hmm. as I start to get into these different tires, I have one set of aggressive knobbies for my adventure bike. But mm -hmm. I'm also enjoying riding it to work around town to the girlfriend's house. Uh, taking trips on the weekend and going out and doing some different stuff. So I'm looking for a tire kind of like this where I'm going to be able to hop on, put a few hundred miles on the weekend, but I can also dip off, hit some fire roads, some single track. And while it might not be as good as like a super solid tire that's uh, going to be phenomenal in loose dirt, mud, stuff like that, I want a tire that I can trust still and it's going to be predictable and stuff like that. So that TKC 70 Rock sounds like it might be uh, the perfect tire for what I want to run. I th I think that'd be ideal. Yeah, that's a great bike you've got there, and this this would be the ideal tire for that for the situation you described. I'm loving it so far. It's been a good change. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, great. Nice. And yeah, we'll go ahead and pull the next slide up there, Matt. Can we talk about this, Joe? Yeah. So this is something that's pretty amazing. Uh, we, of course, like we talked about earlier, we're big in the automotive world, and so we were able to tag along with an automotive program. And this is our flat tire roadside assistance program. So it comes free with every Continental motorcycle tire. It's not a not a something you got to pay for. Hmm. Basically, you buy your Continental motorcycle tire, and you go online and register it. There's uh, you can probably see it there. The totalconfidence-plan.com. But right. register your tire, and then for three years, regardless of the miles on the tire, if you get a flat you call the, the toll-free number and they'll dispatch a prepaid tow. It's not a, uh, it's not a tow you pay for and then file a claim and wait six weeks to get your money. It's we dispatch a prepaid tow. So uh, pretty awesome. So it's not a, not a road hazard warranty. We don't fix or replace your tire, but we'll get you off the road and get you somewhere where you can uh, get it fixed. So, you know, whether you need to go to a shop or you need to go home and, you know, deal with it, but uh, we'll get you off the road and tow you up to 150 miles. And it's also good in Canada. So we've got 240 kilometers for our Canadians <laughs> on there. So. That's uh, something pretty cool right there. I'd never heard that one before. It's so. pretty awesome. Yeah. Cause it's no cost. And uh, uh, yeah, it's one of those things you hope you never need it, but if you do, it's there for you. Nice. All right. So we got a few other things coming up. We got some questions. Um, so this week we had a few people send in questions uh, to us here at live sessions and uh, ask some questions for Continental. So we're going to get to those in just a few moments. Okay. Uh, the people that sent in some uh, questions for us, we're going to have some goodies uh, from Continental as well, some swag to pass out to them. But uh, first, we uh, actually had some questions from our guys at Continental that were frequently asked questions. So we're going to bring those up here uh, because you guys asked and uh, go over some of these things uh, basically to help educate you a little bit further on tires and uh, some of the different sizes and uh, how to decipher what the numbers on the tires are. So uh, back to you guys. Yeah, sure. Well, a lot of times folks ask, you know, what does all this mean? You know, 180, 55, does 55 mean 55 millimeters and different things? But what that means is, uh, and this is be a typical sport touring or sport bike tire. So 180 means the tire section width is 180 millimeters wide. And 55 is that height to sidewall ratio, or we call it aspect ratio. What that means is the section height of the tire is actually 55% of 80. So that would this would be a fairly low profile tire, which would be a typical modern sport bike or sport touring bike. ZR means it's a high speed radial. Uh, meaning that it's good for better than 149 miles per hour. And 17 in is the rim uh, diameter. So uh, now just for comparison, if we looked at, let's say, that tire below a 140.90, so that tire is 140 millimeters wide, but the section height is 90% of 140, so it's a fairly tall tire. But okay. uh, that's what those numbers mean. And uh, I think if we – well, let me talk about the Harley size there too because this comes up – so, and when you're talking big V twin tires, there's a couple different ways. There's the alpha numeric and the typical and the standard numeric size. So, and you could go on the Connie motorcycle tire uh, website 
and uh, there's a conversion chart that you can see that in this case, an MU 85 B means a bias belted tire is actually the same size as a 140 90 B 16. Uh, but that comes up sometimes because people will say, well, my bike came with this, but my dealer put this on. So what's the deal? Uh, so it's the same size tire, just different ways of denoting it. So Gotcha. Um, as we transfer over to the next slide, um, for our guys that are out there watching right now, if you guys have any questions you want to ask, feel free to post them up in the comments. I can't promise we'll get to all of them, but I can see them coming up here. So if you guys have some questions, put them up in the comments there, Facebook, YouTube, and we'll do our best to answer those for you as well. Uh, back to you guys. Yeah, so here's the okay, good so, – uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Lewis. Well, I was just, just going to say, uh, Travis, whenever we have a question slide, the very next slide's explaining the question. So show okay. the question and pull the, next, pull the next slide right behind it. Love it. So, so yeah, so here's an explanation of the lettering. The 180, like I mentioned, is the uh, tire width in millimeters. 55, the height to width ratio. ZR means it's a radial 17. Uh, MC means motorcycle tire, so don't try and put it on your, your car. Uh, 73 is the load index, and uh, again, you can find that on our website, uh, what that 73 uh, designates in uh, what the pounds or load the tire will carry. W is the speed rating, and so this means this tire is good for 168 miles an hour, but you'll notice the W is in parentheses. So when you see that parentheses, that means it exceeds that. So this tire is good for carrying that given load rating for um, better than 168 miles an hour. So, wow. uh, yeah, for an hour. And then, of course, it says it's a Sport Attack uh, 3 uh, made in Germany and brand name is Continental. I like it. Yeah, so it's good stuff. So, well, I think it's always good to know what all that stuff means. So, you know, so you'll know if you're getting the right stuff or it's uh, just educated riders, a better rider, I think. So definitely I've picked up a few things on date stamps and how to read tire sizes over the year. But it's always interesting yeah. to pick up a couple other new new things along the way. Sure. Let's see what our next slide looks like. And these are questions that we get frequently all the time. Yeah. Oh, this is one of my favorites. So the tread on my tires look backwards compared to the directional arrow. Is there something wrong with my tires? And that's real common on uh, certain ones of our tires, but also other manufacturers too. And the reason is, is the front tire does a really different job than the rear tire. So the front tires, tread designs typically look like they're going this way. In the rear, they're kind of going this way. And that's because the rear tire is following the front. The front is kind of clearing the path through the water. Uh, front tire does most of its work under braking. Rear tire does most of its work under acceleration. So mm -hmm. uh, there are directional arrows molded on the tire that tell you which way to, the tire should go rotation. So, so people say, well, gosh, you know, this tread pattern looks backwards to the arrow. No, that's, that's how they are. And not just with ours, but with all, all brands of motorcycle tires. But looking at this other lettering stuff here, there's some other stuff. TL means it's a tubeless tire, meaning it's intended to run on a tube plus rim without a tube. Uh, TT means it's a tube type tire that needs to be on a tube type rim with the tube. Uh, and then uh, the tire position and direction we kind of already covered. Tread wear indicators, um, all tires have them and you'll see it depends on the brand of tire, but sometimes it'll be a little picture or uh, sometimes it'll be a little arrow. And I think most of ours are TWI, meaning tread wear indicator. When you see that stamped in the sidewall, you can follow that across the tread surface and see the tread wear indicator down in the grooves. So okay. when you're down to the tread wear indicator, it's time for new tires. So. Gotcha. Um, now, I actually have a question myself on here versus tubeless sure. tires versus a tube type tire. Mm -hmm. um, being an off-road guy, I like to run, well, I run Moose, which is a foam in a lot of my stuff, or I run a tubeless system, which is a chambered air. But what are your thoughts on putting a inner tube in a tube type, or sorry, in a tubeless tire? That's actually a question we have coming up in another slide. I will uh, retract my statement, and we'll get to it when we get <laughs> well, back. I it's a good question. Else, it comes up a lot. Somebody else has asked it also, I can see on, on Facebook. So Yeah. Oh, yep. Kyle Bradshaw. I've heard that name before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sounds like a sketchy type of guy. Probably. <laughs> so uh, Kyle Bradshaw asks, lots of big adventure bike tires are tubeless now. Uh, mm -hmm. And 
I don't think he knows how to type, but uh, can you use same thing I asked? Use tubes with a tubeless tire. Yeah. So if you want to just go ahead and answer that now. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. So you can know. you can put a tube in a tubeless tire if it's on a rim that's meant to be um, run tubeless. So, you know, because there is a difference in the bead area where on a tubeless versus a tube type. But where it comes up very often is, uh, let's say you've got an old, uh, I don't know, an old Airhead BMW with spoked wheels. And we have a tire called the Classic Attack, which is a modern design radial intended for old bikes. And so typically a consumer will get a hold of us and say, hey, you know, I got this bike that it's got spoked wheels and supposed to run tubes, but I want to run your Classic Attack. Well, you can run a tube in a tubeless tire on a tube type rim. You cannot run a tube on a tubeless tire on a tubeless rim because the bead area is different. So, um, huh. but anyway, it's a little complicated, but, uh, but yeah, typically you can run a tube. Well, for my Triumph Tiger, for example, I've got a tube type rim. So it's a spoked wheel bike that's intended to run tubes, but I've got TKC eighties on there that are tubeless tires, but uh, I'm running tubes in them. The difference between tubeless and tube type, the tire itself is the butyl rubber airtight liner. So like yeah. you mentioned, uh, one of those systems for dirt bikes that uh, lets you run tubeless, it's still not a tubeless tire. Uh, so air would theoretically- it does seep through, yeah. Right, would leak out through the carcass. But you know, in a dirt bike situation, well, I'm sure you're checking it fairly often, but, uh, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend those for street use. Uh, um, but, uh, but yeah, so you can run a tube in a tubeless tire, uh, on a tube type rim. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> on my 790, when I had my stock wheels, I didn't have a good set of Excel off-road wheels yet. Mm -hmm. I basically, the, the bike came tubeless. It was sealed on the inside around the spokes. I just right. pulled out a knife and cut out some of the tubeless stuff and drilled a hole for a valve stem in there Yeah. and stuffed the tube in with my tubeless tires. So Yep. It seems to be holding up too good, but you're telling me that's probably not the best idea. Probably not the best, but I, I'm not that familiar with the rim on the KTMs, but, um, you know, but. Yeah, it seemed a little deeper in the center than I'd yeah. seen in the past with off-road wheels, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, let's uh, pull up the next uh, slide there, Matt. Oh, this is a good one because this comes up a lot. So, uh, so all tires, and if you go to the next slide, you'll see, um, I think we got a picture. Yeah, so it says uh, the uh, air pressure is 42 PSI. So people are like, well, should I run the 42 or my owner's manual says 36? Well, we always defer to the manufacturer's owner's manual, but know that that number printed on the sidewall is where the tire achieved its maximum uh, load speed index at. So for maximum load carrying capability, then yeah, use the number on the sidewall. Uh, for maximum comfort, run what the owner's manual said. Now, in most cases, you know, a typical sport touring bike or sport bike, it's, I haven't seen one yet that's not 36 PSI on the front and 42 on the rear. Uh, hmm. I'm sure there's an exception, but most of them are 36 front, 42 rear. And most tires are, are printed 42. So, yeah, so you're running the same thing. The front, you know, 36 when the owner's manual, 42 um, printed on the sidewall. Uh, a lot of BMWs, you know, tend to be hard on tires. And a lot of the BMW guys find that they get better mileage running at 40. So, um, so yeah, you kind of got to assess your situation. But we always say the owner's manual is recommended. But uh, maximum load at the number on the sidewall. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> so this is a good one too uh so yeah if you look at the next slide so we're talking about dot codes and dot department of transportation uh and then there's a lot of stuff on there that's um you know what plant what tire it is and i always say yeah don't worry about that stuff we don't need to know that you know as consumers but the last four are the week of manufacture in the the in this case week 20 i think that's 26 of 2006 12 yeah yeah, so belt was 26 weeks, so somewhere around June, I guess, in uh, 2012. So 
uh, tires are not made to order. Tires are built, put in a warehouse, put in a boat, shipped to a distributor, put in a warehouse, shipped to Bike Bandit, and then shipped to you. So, yeah, some time passes. And modern street tires are built with anti-aging oils in the compound. So tires do not go bad uh, that quick. So we say, Continental, and I think most tire manufacturers are pretty similar to this, that if a tire is five years old or less, it's a new tire. You don't you don't have to worry about it. So uh, if the tire's ten years old in service, then yeah, you should probably look at replacing it. But five years old or less, it's a new tire as far as we're concerned. That's good. Yeah, um, yeah, because I think it's one of those things people get too hung up on, and it really doesn't <laughs> doesn't matter. I, yeah. I've heard a story uh, once. I don't remember exactly the details, but one of our test riders. Uh, they did an experiment like this between an old, like, I don't know, a four or five year old tire and a, a new one. Even our test rider, he couldn't tell the difference. So hmm. it's not that, something. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next question. Is it safe to plug a motorcycle tire? Um, yeah. Um, I no, because <laughs> basically when you've got a hole in a tire, you've broken the cords and then you're going to take a, a tool and break some more cords to get a plug in. So if you have to plug it to get home, I guess that's OK. But, yeah, don't um, don't depend on it. You know, I've had guys ask, can I do that on a track day tire? Uh, no, uh, but <laughs> you know, I'll give you a good example. My wife has a, a, a little SUV and a plug tire on it and the thing loses air. So she ended up having to replace the tire. So uh, an air loss on a motorcycle, uh, you know, a catastrophic air loss, you know, from a plug coming loose or something. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want the result of that. So, yeah. So if you damage a tire, it's best to replace it. And then number, number two there is the question about the inner tube with a tubeless tire, which actually brings up another question from Kyle Bradshaw. And he was asking about how the bead area was different uh, between a tubeless tire and a tube type tire. Yeah, I, we should have had a picture up on that. I think you can see it on our website in the frequently asked uh, questions. Basically, there's like a like an inner uh, bead, so to speak, that keeps the tire from drop, dropping into the drop center. OK, makes sense. Yeah. And then this one comes up a bunch too, you know, radial tire on the rear and a bias tire on the front. That's really common on a lot of adventure bikes with 21 inch front wheels. Um, so yeah, we always say do use what the manufacturer said. Uh, and typically, um, you know, it's very common to see a radial rear on the back of an adventure bike and a bias front. Um, so yeah, if the manufacturer delivered your bike that way, that was designed to be that way. Nobody okay. makes a radial tire in a 90, 90, 21. They're all, um, excuse me, bias constructed tires. So. All right. So stick with what the manufacturer put on there. Gotcha. We will do that. Yeah. So the next couple of slides are how you can find out more information about Continental. We'll shout out to Brad Bailey, who's doing a lot of our social media. He's got a really good blog going on. He's putting stuff everywhere. We want people to subscribe so you can go to ConnieMotoUSABlog.com and sign up, and we'll send you out a newsletter. Brad is the man. He does some really nice work. He, he really does. And we have Facebook presence. We have a YouTube channel. We have Instagram also. All right. Nice. Yeah, I've kind of browsed around that a little bit this week, uh, checking into it and seeing exactly what you guys are putting up there. And there's some really nice quality content. So if you guys are looking to read up on some tires and see some different stuff that Continental is involved in, I highly suggest you guys check out those uh, sources there. Yeah, we just put up, uh, Brad did a, Brad and I did a series of videos that basically from my garage here, answering some questions, looking at some tires and such. So, um, so yeah, pretty, pretty good stuff. So nice. All right. Um, I think that is concludes all the slides there. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, look at uh, some of the questions that you guys sent into us. Uh, I believe we have four or five questions we're going to go over and the people that did submit the questions ahead of time, we actually have a few prizes that we're going to give out for you. Um, we got a tank bag that we're going to give out to some Somebody. We got a couple of helmet bags and then we got some cool uh, dry roll bags also for your adventure bike guys. So I can't promise who's going to get what, but we're going to put together a nice package for each one of these people that submitted some questions and uh, we'll get those going. So uh, let's hop over to the first question. And this question comes in from Blake. He says, hey, guys, I have a 2006 Triumph Scrambler. 
he doesn't ride off road at all, and he wonders what the best road tire is for his bike. Well, that's a that's an easy one. Uh, we've actually got a couple applications that would be awesome on that. But uh, uh, even though you say you ride mostly street in our Trail Attack Three, we have sizes. That's a ninety. 90% street, 10% dirt tire. We've got sizes, I think it's a 190-90-19 on the front and a 130-80-17 on the rear. So we've got those in the Trail Attack 3, but also the Road Attack 3. So we've got a couple options for that bike. Nice. Awesome bike. Those are a lot of fun. And then if he has that little 90-10 tire and he decides he wants to go ride off-road or go camping yeah. for the weekend or something, it'll be a, dirt be a good fit for him. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Question number two. This one was sent in by Ken, and uh, Ken says, I just purchased a DL1000 V-Strom. I'm looking at a more adventurous tire. I'm wondering why we lose wet grip on the more aggressive tires. I think with the larger grooves, it would be better for displacing water. Yeah, that sounds kind of odd to me, but I'll let you guys answer that one. Sure. Well, that's a good question, and not knowing what brand of tires he's been on, it's hard to say, but he is correct that the larger grooves make for a lot of water drainage, which would typically work really good, but the compound itself has a lot to do with it as well, so that's why we put a lot of effort into, you know, we talked about the rain grip compound and stuff. I've personally ridden uh, my Tiger 800 on TKC80s in some pretty intense rain, and, and it's fine. Uh, in fact, it was fun because some of the guys I was on the trip with were like, I can't believe you're riding those knobby tires in the rain, but it really worked good. Uh, so it depends on the tire. Compound has a lot to do with rain grip besides the tread. So uh, without knowing what tire he's um, riding on, I know like our Trail Attack 3 was one of the top rated tires uh, in the wet by Motorrad Magazine, um, and so as well as the TKC70. So uh, there's a couple of options for him. Nice. Well, hopefully he gets off whatever's not working for him and gets on a tire that's going to suit his needs a little better. Yep. All right, next question, number three. So this one was sent in by Tom. Uh, Tom says, I currently own several styles of street bikes, uh, ranging from a 250cc to a large Kawasaki Concourse 1400. All these bikes require different tires. I know that different tires are for different styles of riding. He loves the twisties and the confidence from a good tire. I try not to ride in the rain, and he does not do track days. I've been using a competitor's tires for most of my sport bikes. What mm -hmm. type of tires give the best performance and mileage without breaking the bank? That was a well, lot. <laughs> yeah. So, so, well, he's got quite a range there. So on the small 250 bike, let us I'm just going to assume that it's a uh, – like a Ninja 250 or, you know, CBR 250 or something. And in our Connie Motion line, which is our price point sport touring tire, it's an excellent mileage tire, zero degree steel belt, a uh, really good tire. And we make those in the sizes for the little sport bikes. Uh, but another option that would be really cool on one of those little sport bikes is our Attack SM. It's a tire designed for supermoto bikes, but it also works really awesome on those little um you know, little sport bikes, the 250s, 300s, 400s. Uh, it's a real lightweight tire, pretty aggressive profile, aggressive compound. In fact, I think in South America, there's a race series running on those tires. So, <laughs> so we've got a couple options for that bike. On the concourse, uh, we are top of the line sport touring tire. The Road Attack 3 would be awesome. And uh, which is actually an awesome tire for even anything in between those two. Um, we call it a sport touring tire, but it really does grip and handle really good and still get good mileage. I remember meeting a consumer at the motorcycle uh, show in uh, New York a couple years ago and uh, asked me, you know, what tire should I put on? He had a KTM uh, 1290 Super Duke. And, uh, you know, of course, those things tend to eat tires, you know, on a pretty regular basis. And um, we put, I suggested Road Attack 3. And darn it, the next year at the show, he comes over and shows me a picture of his bike with 8,000 miles on it. Tires looked awesome. He said, I got a ton of miles left on this thing. And that was Road Attack 3 on a on a you know 1290 super duke so road attack three has a lot of applications but uh, i think in the road attack three and the other tires i mentioned they'll be a good combo for him nice nice those 1290 dukes are phenomenal i had a 990 super duke for a, a while back in 2008 2009 and that was pretty much the extent of my street biking right there but yeah. scared myself a little too much i like the dirt <laughs> I, I like those 990s. Those were cool. And I did ride a 1290 for a little bit, Super Duke. Oh, gosh, those are awesome bikes. So. 
Yeah, they're phenomenal. So, all right, mm-hmm. question number four, and then we're going to get into a segment I call Jeff's Garage. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, question number four comes from Mark. And uh, Mark says, I used to have an adventure motorcycle and he ran TKC 80s on it. He went to a rally in North Carolina a few years ago and a rep from Continental was there to let us know about the Continental's dual tread concept for their touring tires. He's since sold that bike and bought an F6B and will need to replace the OEM tires on his F6B. He couldn't find any tires at all for that bike. Will Continental be making tires for cruisers, especially those who like to hit the twisties override in the super slab? Yeah, great question. And if he went to a rally in North Carolina and met a Continental guy, that was that was me. Uh, unfortunately, now we do have a really good cruiser tire, a big V-twin tire line called the Connie Tour, which is a great mileage tire, phenomenal handling, good wet weather performance. But we don't do a tire in sizes for the F6B, which is basically a gold wing variant. And it uses a, a kind of an unusual size. It's a 180-65 radial 16. Uh, it's pretty similar to what an 09 or newer uh, Harley touring bike would use, but not the same. So we really don't have a tire for that bike as much as we'd like to. Now, we are seeing more applications for that tire. Some Indians use that. And, of course, Goldwing's up to the new version use that tire. So I'm, I never say never, but unfortunately, we don't have a tire for him right now. All right. Well, I'm sure there's something out there that will fill his needs until you guys decide to make something if that time comes. Yeah. So as we uh, did a little pre-meeting the other day, we started poking around in your garage behind you there. And uh, it's a little dark, can't see a whole lot, but uh, we got some slides from what I understand. And uh, you have a couple BMW uh, GSs back there that have a pretty cool story on them. Yeah, I don't, yeah since the lights, since the sun's gone down. But, uh, but so Simon and Lisa Thomas that call themselves to Ride the World, it's a husband and wife team that have been around the world for, well, they left home in 2003. <laughs> and they've been back. So um, they got on the road. They planned the 16 months trip and they ended up uh, staying on the road, had their parents sell their house, put the money in their account. And they've been on the road ever since. Well, they were in town a couple of years ago for the Overland Expo here in Asheville, North Carolina area. And uh, so they needed a place to keep their bikes for a while. And I've got room in the shop. So um, so here they are. Maybe I can turn a lighter around and you can see there's Lisa's bike. The uh, the, oops, that's my bike. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so there's a F800 GS and a R1200 GS that have been around the world uh, sitting right here in my garage. So, uh, How many miles do you say they have on them? Well, uh, the bikes, I think these have a couple hundred thousand on them uh, or maybe a hundred something. But they've done uh, in their journeys have done uh, over 400,000 miles and all of it maybe except I think he said it was 99 percent of the time and he tracks it on his GPS have been on Continental TKC 80s. And the reason they use the 80 is because it works so good on the street, but is able to get them through the rough off-road stuff. And if you guys uh, watch and go to their website, toridetheworld.com, and you can see some of their adventures. And it's amazing they actually survived it. But uh, but yeah, TKC 80 is their tire of choice. And they get pretty phenomenal miles out of them too. So it's... uh, um, yeah, there's, you can kind of see Lisa's, uh, 800 sitting there and then there's my KTM and my tiger sitting there. But, uh, but anyway, it's kind of interesting to have some bikes that have made some significant history taking up space in my garage. <laughs> that's phenomenal right there. Yeah, kind of funny. So guys, that's pretty much going to wrap up everything I had laid out for today's show. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add or tell to our, uh, fan base through the bike bandit channels? We just appreciate you guys inviting us on. This is a really cool platform. Yeah, this is fun. Thanks for having us. You know, we get paid to talk about motorcycles. What a deal. You know, this is fun. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I love doing these things. So. Yeah, so, and it was fun, you know, seeing the interaction from the folks. And, uh, yeah, hopefully everybody learned something. They'll, next time they need tires, they'll uh, give Continentals a try. Yeah, definitely. And if uh, anyone watches, this uh not live wants to leave something in the comments we'll do our best to answer those questions for you and uh, you guys are also always welcome to email continental um give them a call if their phones are up right now i'm not sure what's going on with the whole covid thing but i'm sure they are very eager to answer any questions you may have um you can also call us at bike bandit and we'll uh, do our best to get that stuff answered for you so anyway guys um i'm travis brock with bike bandit for live sessions uh, i want to give a huge thank you to lewis hill and jeff reed for joining us on the show tonight and uh hope you guys all have a good one 
get out and ride. Thanks, Travis. Thank you. Have a nice day.